Hello everybody and welcome to the panel Reinventing High Performance Computing at Supercomputing 2022 in Dallas. I want to, th to thank Dan Reed for organizing this panel, pulling together a wonderful a set of panelists, in including uh, Kathy Yellick, Jack Dongara and uh, Dorian Arnold. Um, here, the question was really, what should we do as a community to reinvent to adopt to the changing nature in high performance computing, but of course driven by the general development in uh, around the world. So my point here is that it's really the network. The network is the supercomputer because everything else, other hardware components are somewhat commodity in the sense that they are being developed for larger markets. So server CPUs are mostly developed for data centers these days with their special SKUs. AI graphics GPUs are of course not developed for high performance computing anymore because the AI market is much larger. You could even argue the Bitcoin market may have been more profitable for, <laughs> for some uh, area, for some range of time. So, and then of course, we are also using standard memory components like HBM, DDR, LPDDR. So in some sense, we have not much of a choice when we build a supercomputer system. We are putting together these commodity components and integrating it into a large machine. So what remains? What do we add as a community? And I'm trying in the, in the sense of the panel here to be as provocative as possible. So of course we do some better packaging, right? The metal box, the power supply, the cooling, but this will soon also hit data centers. So I'm not so, sorry, also it's not my area, so I don't, uh, I'm not a packaging person. But one of the differentiating factors that we still have is the network. The NICs are different, the switches are different. Sometimes even cables and topologies are different. We can see it in the Fugaku machine, the InfiniBand network, the Slingshot network. We use Dragonfly topologies and high dimensional torus topologies that are very different from uh, commodity. So they're quite specialized to high performance computing. However, I'm predicting that this will also change in the future. We could argue that maybe the software will largely remain different, but that is only a maybe. So, so we shall see that maybe because MPI essentially is being adopted in the deep learning context. It's just called collective communication libraries, but they're essentially just the MPI collectives um, torn out of the MPI specification like Nickel, Nickel, and many of these sh star CCL libraries. So what do we have left as a high performance computing communi community? Well, actually we could argue that everything we do here, we contribute to the wider community is our success. So we are not victim of commoditization because we are using commodity components. No, we are the, we are pushing our ideas out to a wider community that allows the wider community to commoditize. But at the end, we will be remembered as the source of those ideas, very much ve like vectorization. Vectorization was invented by Cray and, and many others, and now is basically everywhere. Now, acceleration in the terms of GPUs was driven mostly in the high performance computing context at the beginning and is now driving AI worldwide. So you could argue that high performance computing is a big part of the success of artificial intelligence worldwide. So really the commoditization of high performance computing techniques is a very strong sign of the impact of the supercomputing community and we can be very proud of this. Furthermore, what we now need to do is not sit here in despair and say, oh, we have to we have to, we are a victim to this commoditization. We don't have anything special. No, we need to reinvent ourselves and perpetually continue to inspire others. So we need to go for the next technologies. We need to identify what those are. And I want to point at two major trends to watch out for in this uh, little tutorial, uh, sorry, in this little, um, little overview talk. One is the convergence of hyperscale data center and high performance computing networks. And this is already, have, this is already ongoing so in the Ethernet space and the InfiniBand networks, for example, we are already converged at the lowest signal layers, at layer zero. And I'm predicting in the near future, we will push this up to higher layers, maybe layer one, layer two, maybe even layer three, maybe even the application layer four, we will see. But if you just look at the raw performance between cloud HPC systems on the left side and on-prem HPC systems, so traditional supercomputers on the right side, like the ALP system, the Pitstein system, and the deepest system, <coughs> ULIC, um, we can see that in terms of latency, some of them are already competitive. Like Azure and Oracle is, has a very low latency, even lower than some supercomputing systems, some dedicated supercomputing systems. In terms of bandwidth, we also see a good mix. So they're actually not generally worse. So cloud HPC systems can 
deliver a very similar performance to on-prem HPC systems. By the way, this is an excerpt from the paper that we call Noise in the Clouds that will appear at Sigmetrics uh, 23, which gives a complete overview of different network architecture, network benchmarks, and also noisiness in cloud systems, which you would expect there is a lot, compared to on-prem HPC systems. So if you really want to see whether these systems are competitive, not necessarily by price, but by performance, then uh, you should look at this paper in, in detail. My second point I wanted to make is that artificial intelligence is pushing ahead like a steamroller. And we can either decide to be part of the road or we can decide to get on board and help drive or direct the steamroller itself. So this is artificial intelligence from my perspective. It's really co-design like we dreamed about. We, people are doing extreme workload specialization, sometimes too much. So people have been removing DRAM memories from systems because models were small enough at the time when they designed the system. And now some of those are suffering because larger models like transformer models or GPT models do not fit these architectures. So many startups actually died because of too specialization, too much specialization in their system design. But that is, that is a good ecosystem. So we are trying everything. Really co-design like we dreamt about. And now there are more and more AI specialized supercomputers that are being deployed. And Microsoft has been very adamant about this, announcing uh, the AI supercomputer or the, the computer for the planet, to, to, quote, um, to quote Satya. And these are also very specialized. So I just wanted to mention one opportunity here that, that I took during my sabbatical in 2019, where uh, together with colleagues at Microsoft, we developed the Hemming Mesh Network Topology, which is really a topology that is optimized for deep learning communication patterns and deep learning workloads. Since then, the workloads have shifted. They have actually changed. As I mentioned, this is quite, uh, this field is moving extremely fast, but I would still believe that um, many, or if not most aspects, this topology are very useful to design future artificial intelligence systems. So with that, I would like to go into the panel discussion and uh, see, see what others have to say about this. So again, the network is the, com the supercomputer. We need to design the best possible network for our machines. Thank you.